The optic disc we know is the starting point of the optic nerve and it is made up of two parts. The first, it is divided into two parts, the optic cup and the neuroretinal rim. This structure is the optic cup and the surrounding one is the neuroretinal rim. Now, the cup doesn't have any specific function other than that it allows the blood vessels to enter and exit through the eye. See, you can see over here that the vessels are entering and exiting through the optic cup. However, the neuroretinal rim is the most important part because it contains the neurons of the optic nerve, hence the name neuroretinal rim. Okay, and it has about 1.2 million neurons. Please remember this number. It is very, very frequently asked. The number of neurons in the neuroretinal rim is 1.2 million. Yeah? Okay, now there is, a, there is a specific ratio of the cup to the neuroretinal rim. The cup occupies only 30% of the optic disc whereas the neuroretinal rim occupies 70% and once these nerves start getting damaged that is the neurons get uh, damaged in glaucoma we can understand that the neuroretinal rim starts to gradually decrease in size and the cup disc ratio will is going to decrease. Let us understand what is this cup disc ratio. Okay, now this is the neuroretinal rim and the optic disc. Um, so, the normal cup disc ratio is given by the formula the area of the cup divided by the area of the disc, and in the normal people, it is 0 0.3. The range varies from 0 0.3 to 0 0.6. So, the normal cup disc ratio in a healthy eye is 0 0.3 to 0. Uh, to 0 0.6 then the cup disc ratio increases that is when there is a damage to the neuroretinal rim it becomes more than 0 0.7 and then you have to suspect glaucoma. So we have seen now that the abnormal cup disc ratio indicates a neuroretinal rim damage ok. Now, there are a few other characteristics that you have to observe when you are looking at the optic cup, uh, so the optic disc. Uh, that is, the margin of the disc needs to be very crisp and sharp, that is, it needs to be clear. If at all you see that the margin is blurred, it indicates a disc edema, that is nothing but papilledema. And the color is another important feature. A healthy neuroretinal rim is reddish pink in color. Please remember this. Healthy neuroretinal rim is reddish pink in color and CDR that is a cup disc ratio is about 0.3 to 0.6 is to 1. Now the distribution of the vessels that pass through this cup is important. Now there are two central retinal arteries and two central retinal veins. How will you differentiate the artery from the vein is that the artery is relatively narrow and does not pulsate. There is no pulsation of the artery as opposed to the systemic arteries. Here the vein pulsates, okay. the central retinal veins pulsate. Now after passing through the cup, one artery and one vein proceed nasally. See this is my optic cup one artery and one vein go nasally and another artery and another vein go temporally. Okay, that is how they pass. Then that is the structure. Now if, uh, please remember that there are only two veins that pulsate in the body that is the jugular vein and the central retinal vein. This can be asked as a question. Only two veins that pulsate in the body are the jugular vein and the central retinal vein. However, if the central retinal artery starts to pulsate, then it is an emergency condition. It indicates that the IOP is very high or the blood pressure, the systemic blood pressure is very low and you have to treat the patient on an emergency basis. Okay, that is about the normal optic cup and the optic disc. Let us see the changes in op open angle glaucoma. There are 8 important points. There is increased cup disc ratio. Now, the healthy pink colored neuroretinal rim becomes pale in color. So, there is increased paler. There is the characteristic splinter hemorrhage that is specific to glaucoma. 
then there is this nasal shifting of the blood vessels we will see we will understand this in a little time then there is the lamina dot sign the sign of bionetting then the break of the isn't rule and the glaucomatous optic atrophy these are the eight characteristic features of a glaucomatous optic disc now we will see each of this in detail now let's look at the cup disc ratio look at the first image over here the cup disc ratio this is a cup and this is a disc it appears normal about 0.3 is to 1 okay However, when you are progressing down as the disease is progressing, here you can see that it has increased the cup, the pallor has increased that is the cup, the one that I have circled and the ratio is about 0.7 is to 1 and in the ultimate final stages it has become almost 0.9 is to 1. See the cup is so huge you can hardly see the neuroretinal rim. Okay, and That is about the cup disc ratio. Now you see. Uh, you can remember the pay, uh, the healthy pink color of the NRR. Here you can see the disc is clearly very pale. And this one is the characteristic splinter hemorrhage that is very much a diagnostic of glaucoma. Now coming to the nasal shifting of the vessels, this is an apparent sign. That is there is no, the vessels really don't move to the nasal side because of the thinning of the neuroretinal rim, the vessels appear as if they have shifted to the nasal side. See, you can see here the vessels appear centrally. However, when there is a thinning, you can see all of these vessels from this central uh, location, they have shifted nasally. This is an apparent sign because of thinning of neuroretinal rim. Now, the lamina dot sign is nothing but increase in the number of dots that appear in the optic disc due to the more exposed lamina cryprosa. So, there is a continued deepening of the cup which causes exposure of the underlying lamina cryprosa and it is recognized by the grey fenestrae of lamina. All these dots they appear as grey fenestrae on your ophthalmoscopic examination. Okay, now another interesting sign is your sign of bionetting. This is an old type of gun which was used earlier. So this has, this is a knife of the gun. So this whole structure is called as a bayonet. Okay. Now the bayoneting here means there is a double angulation of blood vessels. That is there is an apparent discontinuity of blood vessels. Now this is my cup and this is my neuroretinal rim. Let's assume this is thinned out. My vessels pass like this and suddenly they come out like this. I cannot see the vessel over here is not visible. This is the bionetting sign because it, the vessels are bending and again bending this. They are bending twice. Because of the complete loss of retinal tissue, these vessels bend and hence appear as if they are disappearing because they make a sharp turn into the cup. This sharp turn resembles the bayonet, so hence it is called the bayoneting sign. Okay, let's look at the isn't rule. What is the isn't rule? Is that the inferior neuroretinal rim is the widest part of the neuroretinal rim, followed by the superior, then the nasal, and then the temporal, which is the narrowest part. This is how the normal neuroretinal rim should look like that is the inferior most part should be the widest however when the patient becomes glaucomatous this isn't rule is broken okay because see the normally the cup is like a horizontal cup and hence my inferior um, nrr is the thickest so what happens in glaucoma is that there is vertically ovalization of the cup the, the cup becomes a vertical oval and hence you can see that my inferior neuroretinal limb is no longer the widest. So, the isn't rule is broken in uh, glaucoma. Now, another important point for question uh, exam point of view. These can be asked the triad of glaucoma, open angle glaucoma is increased IOP, the characteristic disc changes and the uh, characteristic visual fields. We have seen all of these till now. There's changes in the IOP, the disc changes and 
the uh, classic visual field changes of open angle glaucoma. These three are required for the diagnosis of primary open angle glaucoma. Okay. Now, this is the last stage when the cup disc ratio becomes 1 is to 1. Okay. And this stage is called the glaucomatous optic atrophy. The cup disc ratio is 1 is to 1. That is, there is no neuroretinal rim left at all and the patient is completely blind. Okay, that is glaucomatous optic atrophy. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at Medico App. Now, thanks for watching the video. Now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.